Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So we're fresh off of the Android Pi unveiling yesterday. Uh, if, if you missed it, Android P is now Android Pi. It's an official Android 9.0. You can install it on the Pixel, Pixel 2, and actually the Essential phone right back there. So Android Pi is here. There, there is one thing we didn't get to show you yesterday, though, and that is Google's Digital Wellbeing Suite that was launched alongside of it in a beta. Now, Digital Wellbeing was first actually introduced back at Google I.O., and we've been kind of been waiting for for it to arrive. So what is it? Well, digital well-being is is pointing out to you and I that we use our phones too much and that we probably need to set them down. We probably need to push them aside, take a break from time to time. And so it's it's this set of features and tools that show you maybe how much you're using an app. Uh, you can set timers to stop you from continuing to use them. Uh, it'll also help you wind down for bedtime or help you manage your do not disturb settings a little bit better. That's the basics of digital well-being. And, and again, it's something we probably all need to consider taking a look at. Uh, unfortunately, it's only available on Pixel phones that are running Android Pi at this moment. Uh, it could come to other phones. Uh, but for now, it's here. So we wanted to show it to you. This is a first look at Google's digital well-being. Now, before we get too deep in here, if, if you're running Android Pi and you have a Pixel or Pixel 2 and you want to try this, you can. There is a beta open for digital well-being, and I've got links down below if you are interested and want to, want to go ahead and sign up. Once you do sign up, you actually opt into a beta, and then the app will appear available for you in Google Play. So you can see here, digital well-being beta. I have it installed. This is the initial version of the app. Uh, but so you have to opt into the beta first, and then you'll be able to see this listing. Otherwise, I believe it's hidden to everyone who's not been approved. So it is on Google Play, and you install it. Uh, once you install it, though, it you won't actually find it here in your app drawer. There, There's no digital well-being as far as I know. Uh, so you can see there, no well-being there. And if I go into the Ds, it is, uh, it's not up here at either. So in order to access it, once it's installed, you actually go into Settings. And once you're in Settings, you scroll down a little bit and there's this new section here called digital well-being. So we go ahead and tap on that. And once you open it, it, it's already going to show you some information about your most recent day. So digital well-being is broken down into sort of three parts. You've got your overview of your day here, and then you've got ways to disconnect, and then you've got ways to reduce interruptions if you want to. So let's just go piece by piece here. So up top here, digital well-being, there is a breakdown of my day. So it shows me all of the apps I've been using and which ones I've been using the most. It also tells me how many times I've unlocked my phone and how many notifications I've already received. Now, this has been filmed early in the morning, so you can see these numbers are already starting to build up. And it also shows you, uh, I believe that's screen on time for the day, which is 42 minutes. So if I tap on that, it takes me into another screen that breaks it all down for me. So screen time I've had on for 42 minutes today. If I tap this, I can change this to notifications received. And you can see it adjusts things depending on, you know, what's the king of that category. So here's how many times I've unlocked. And this must mean I'm unlocking into inbox is why that's up at the top. Uh, either way, let's go back to screen time. So you'll notice this is only my second day using it. So I do have another day I can go back to, which tells me I had almost two hours of screen on time yesterday. And then it shows you below that which apps you're using the most. So I used Twitter apparently for 43 minutes yesterday and Chrome beta at 15. I was in settings for 11. I used Google Drive, Google News, played some uh, Alto's Odyssey. Um, and I'll go back to the current day and see that adjust. So I was looking at some property today on Redfin. There's inbox and news and that sort of thing. And these will adjust throughout the day depending on you know what I'm doing, if I'm working or just chilling. But you can get it. This will, this will fill up the entire week and I'll be able to go back and look at other days. So here are some other days here in the past. Uh, what's fascinating is I didn't actually have digital well-being installed back then, but you can tell Google with uh, Android P was starting to keep track of some of that stuff in the background. So I can just keep scrolling back. That's August 1st. I had four hours and 35 minutes of screen on time, played a lot of Altos Odyssey, more Twitter, that sort of thing. Um, and I can go from day to day and it'll show me all of this stuff. Where you're seeing gaps, that's probably because I was using another phone because I do test phones very often. So this is kind of your overview. Uh, once you get into this, that's the dashboard that shows you, well, what you've been up to. From there, we can kind of head down to this first section, which is ways to disconnect. And you'll see that the dashboard is there as well. So you can tap on that and it'll take you back in here. Um, so we've kind of already looked at this. This is just sort of your overview up at the top, but also yes, tapping on 
Tapping on in the middle does take you to dashboard. You can also tap on individual apps and it'll show you those breakdowns as well. Um, and within those, you do have those additional notifications, screen time, time opened um, options. So you can really, uh, really see each app and what you're using. So if I go over here to like news, there's Google news and I do use it quite often. So it's, it's going to appear in there. You can scroll back and it'll show you uh, multiple days worth of usage. So Anyway, we'll go to the next section here, which is wind down. So wind down, this is uh, going to bed at night, winding down for the night. And what you're doing here is adjusting a number of things. So what wind down does, and uh, I can try to turn it on for you right now. Let's just go ahead and adjust this time to being 11 a.m. And uh, you'll notice right away my phone just went to black and white or gray scale and and that option is enabled right there so wind down you set it up at a certain time to kick on and then it it, it starts winding down and what it's doing by winding down is reducing the color of your screen to a gray scale and the thought here is uh one to probably reduce some eye strain and number two to kind of be annoying everything's in gray scale so if you're watching a movie or you're on instagram everything's gray scale nothing looks as pretty you probably uh, wouldn't want to look at that for very long. And so then it, it it's, 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 a, it's a notice to say, look, it's time to go to bed. Let's wind down. Let's put this phone down. And when you set up a schedule for it, it'll then turn off at a certain time. And that could be in the morning when you wake up and you wake up and you're back to having a colored phone. You can get back to using it. But the idea of wind down is to really reduce you or remind you that it's time to shut it off. Now, there's a couple other options here. You can do the grayscale if you want. And you can also have it flip on do not disturb at the same time time uh, that it uses wind down or that may just remind it to use do not disturb rules it's, it's one of the two um, you can also have it attached to your nightlight schedule so i use nightlight often um, on my phone which is turns everything to that sort of amber color which also helps you ease eye strain and get ready for bed you can have it attached to that as well or you can at least just adjust that setting from within here if that makes sense so uh, I'm going to turn that off so we get some color back. So wind down is one of those. You might as well set it up. If you set up a do not disturb already for your phone and you use night light, you should also probably use wind down. Now you can adjust the different times of those. So if I want wind down to start maybe a little bit later, let's say then my do not disturb and my night light, that's totally fine, but it's, it's worth setting so that it kind of does remind you like, Hey buddy, it's time to go to bed now. All right, so moving out of wind down, there are two other options down here in reduce interruptions. And what it's doing here is giving you shortcuts to apps that you may just want to turn off notifications for. And then also a shortcut to your do not disturb settings so you can go in and fine tune those. Because again, the whole point of digital well being is to get you to disconnect more, reduce those interruptions, those notifications, those things that kind of keep you coming back to your phone. So if we go into manage notifications, there's some things you can do here. Um, it'll show you the apps that have sent you the most recent notifications or most frequent you can filter those so you can see inbox hits me a lot so does hangout so does nest you can see which ones do it the most and if i want i can just turn those off so i don't really get notifications from those apps anymore obviously i'm not going to do that but if i tap into those apps on this side there's some other options in here like i can say override do not disturb if this is a really important app or leave that off so it doesn't i can hide notification from it on the lock screen hide notification dots from it. There's there's some things I can do here to really manage the notification setup. Now, these tools have been in Android for quite a while. They're just now making them more accessible through digital well-being since they, you know, sort of attach to it. So, that's one of those things you may want to play with. Maybe you don't want notifications from your credit card. I don't know. You get to decide that. Now, do not disturb. This is a really in-depth section and it probably needs its own video, but do not disturb. You guys get it. If you turn do not disturb on, that means you probably don't want to be disturbed. Whether you're in a meeting, whether you're going to bed, whether it's just quiet time, whether you're in your car, whatever it is, you set up certain criteria, uh, whether it's based on time or I believe you can also set it up so that... Um, it turns on while you're driving. So driving right there were pixel ambient services. So you can have a couple of things do that. And also when you set up wind down, you'll notice it creates a rule in do not disturb. But I also have a do not disturb that comes on every day of the week at 11 p.m. and stops at 6 a.m. the next day. Now you can allow have these set up to allow for people to call through so they can still get their calls through or multiple callers will call through or your events will still beep through. You can have sound on for some stuff, sound offs for some stuff, notifications that do and don't work. There's a whole 
whole bunch of options you can actually enable and tweak in here. So I highly suggest you go in and set up a do not disturb. It's one of those tips and tricks things we always tell you in almost every video we do for every phone. So in digital well-being, you just have a shortcut to setting that up. So the basic idea, and this is kind of just a general overview, is that digital well-being wants you to get you put your phone down, to stop using your phone so much. And so one of the big ways they're doing that is with app timers, which I haven't showed you yet. So if we go into the dashboard again and you look at apps. So in this section down here, you can set up timers. And so these timers are basically a limit on that app. So if you look at Redfin, I was again using Redfin this morning to just casually browse properties. Uh, and I noticed it was getting up there in time. And so I said, hey, let's test out this timer. So I set a 15 minute timer and I hit my 15 minutes of use. So it is now grayed out. Um, and if I swipe into here, you'll notice Redfin was one of my recently used apps that it's recommending. It's grayed out. If I tap on that, it says this app isn't available. Redfin is paused since my app timer ran out. If I want to change that, I can, or I can learn more about it. So it is actually restricting me from opening that app. Now, if, if I want to start using Redfin again, I can go in here and take the timer and then you can see the color comes back and I can use it again. But the whole point is to not do that. Um, but I could set it for YouTube. You could set like an hour for YouTube. So if I watch an hour's worth of YouTube and that's all I feel like I should watch, it'll also gray out just like Redfin and not let me into it until the following day. Uh, you can set custom timers. So you could go up and set four hour timer on here if you want. If you think that these initial 15, 30 or hour limits are too short, you can adjust those as well. Um, but you can set these up for just about any app on your phone. You'll notice there are some like system settings. You can't set app timers on those because you probably need to access those at all all times the play store is there for some reason as well but almost any other app you can set a timer so you may want to do that if you feel like you're on instagram too much or twitter or youtube or something like that or maybe inbox in your email and you want to shut that off at night this might be a good way to do it and these things will evolve over time we'll get a look at this daily sort of dashboard um, and also scroll back to other days and just kind of see what we're using the most and we can start shutting those off if we want to. Again, you kind of have to be open to the idea of needing to disconnect, but uh, that's sort of the basics. So again, digital well-being available on Pixel, Pixel 2 running Android Pie. There is a beta sign up. I'll drop a link to that below. And then you just grab it through the Google Play Store. And then you'll find it in just your general settings in a new section called digital well-being. If you guys have comments, questions, or want to know anything else about digital well-being, uh, we're here for that. Otherwise, we're Droid Life. Peace.